Good evening, cruise mates. It's your wondrous wind mate, a cruise ship captain, Chartreuse Pratsy, ever at your service. And yes, Z, I had it muted because I was still setting up and I was kind of talking to Fuang, who is always my lovely guest, bunking here told her own streams back up. Introduce yourself, sweetie. Hi, my name is Flanny. I You all probably know me by now because I'm always here. I am just a, a dark elf crashing at my wife's place until don't, don't my place gets I mean, set up. You are always here, but don't 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 degrade yourself that you are here. You know, it's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just <laughs> you're here with me. Yeah. I need to recenter my camera. But hello, hello. This is day two of Tohu Monster Tower Defense. I did it last Sunday. I'm doing it again. Kind of like how I'm trying to get a trap going by Crit Serve Delicious on Mondays. And welcome, welcome, as well, Pyro. How are you two doing today, by the way? Because I really didn't get to talk too much. I know that you went on about D&D last time around in our server, but I didn't get to talk to you about it much, Pyro. Z says, what if Flanny is into being degraded? No. Uh-oh. You know, uh, that's a question for another time, don't, don't you think? Um, you know, his silence is pretty telling. No. Sweetie, you know your silence is uh, honestly pretty telling. No. Okay. Speaking of, like, this flying line guy who played Valorant like once. And, like, eventually, I want Twitch to, like, kill him. So I can have his you name. You want Twitch to kill him? Holy crap. Hold I want his phone name. Right and then while he's got his name, I can't have it. I, I know, but at the same time, that was just kind of like a huge logical leap. Like, whoa there, partner, whoa there. That's what I say. Like, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that you didn't play Valorant last time. The last time I could remember was The Witness, and yeah, there you go. Is that The Witness or Power Wash? Like, I don't know. It, was uh, it said Witness for you. Fair enough. But yeah, that was me. I can't wait to come back. Welcome back, everybody. For every, uh, for those of you who don't remember the game that I'm playing, it is Tohu Monster Tower Defense, a active tower defense to where or it's set in the world of Tohu Universe. To where exactly so, you are, well, it is just a straight up tower defense. But the main thing with it is that you are an active force in the battlefield and can also reposition towers however you please as well. Which is a very fun aspect of the game, in which, you know, in where you really get to showcase a diff uh, showcase different subsets and how you want your strategy to work exactly so. I'm currently halfway, not halfway, I'm like a third of the way through the campaign right now, but it's just big show on times, to where I'm just kind of getting through. This a very interesting map to where you are working with a tri-line, three-line setup and trying to get and trying to work through the waves of enemies that come not only just from the three lanes, but from the gravestones in the middle of it, because this takes place in the Star Wars Double Mansion. Let's move things around a little bit. I'm gonna place my servo down here to hopefully help deal with that melee. I'm probably gonna wanna start leveling up the Cerna later because since I have my Chen over all the way up, next thing next is get Cerna going. You know, I'll probably get a. I'll probably get a. a Yamame to go with it. I probably should have. shouldn't have sent an extra wave. You know, let's. let's tone that down a little bit. Speaking of Cerna, I was. I went to my, um storage place to basically condense some boxes down because when I moved out it was I basically just literally tipped my entire bedroom into boxes like because I had to move out within like a day yeah um so I went there the other day to condense some stuff and I found my Cherno figure that yeah. I bought like so she gets to come out when I get a new place mm -hmm. I have my whole box she should be coming back out when you get I didn't get a chance. She is a cutie. She is a cutie. Alright, 
tonight. The main gimmick with this map that I really need to worry about is these pumpkin bombs, which will accelerate and self-destruct right onto the very final point of the map, which is something that I kind of really don't need, considering that with this tri-line setup, it is kind of a really bad thing to happen if they do just auto-detonate on me. I forgot that I had waves to deal with up here, so let's adjust our towers accordingly. I'll get my racing all the way up there. And then I'll get to move my ran back down to help deal with the fairies. Yeah, that, or I should just actually have her sitting right here for the meantime. To get that extra attack speed buff. The main thing is that with this mini shrine here in the middle, I'm going to be able to get a nice attack speed buff and help out. I like, I like for my towers to to deal with the middle, but and the, and the mini shrine can stop me from waking at least one enemy, but that's one enemy at most. So I'm really gonna have to be very careful with it. But yeah, that's all that happened with my campaign today. All right, all right, I'm I'm just looking out at ya. I'm just looking out for ya. Because I know I did research with my D&D group and whatever, I just haven't had the best time with organizing anything. I mean, heck, I, the only thing we were able to that we've been able to do over the whole break is like just a singular like sequel to a one shot that we did and even then i kind of maybe got a little sit in my sit i just mean a really upset stomach over it so that kind of uh blew up in my face unfortunately you are very sick so we, we literally had to like what should i say i'm just bed. nice you know you tried saying that and on the night and you nearly died yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> Alright, now we get into one of the more annoying enemy types here. Sakriya's. She is not only ranged, so she can hit any summon towers from afar, but she can also use her time stop abilities to completely lock and freeze one of my towers in place, making it so I can't even, uh, they can't even attack back. She is a nasty enemy type to go against. Usually the strategy would be to put a dummy tower that I don't mind getting frozen in the middle to deal with her, or to just maybe like pick it up, that way she can't actually deal with them, but those are two different solutions to problems that I cannot fully solve. Is there any sort of like taunt towers? There's no, there's no taunt towers. The most that we really have is, <coughs> is one Tergasa who can uh, terrorize, fear the, uh, fear them, so that they have to move in the opposite direction, but that is only a occasional. It only has a chance of happening. Mm. We also get introduced to the giant beefy pumpkin heads, who are that way as they sound like, just giant beefy enemies. Let me level up my Kamame a little bit more. My ran down here is dealing with things just fine, but it's not going to be bad to have Reason move up and help out a little bit more. So we're dealing with everything on all fronts right now, and I could easily use the extra support on the corners here. I'm going to move my ran back. That way Reason can help out a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to need to get an Alice out because that is way too much pressure I'm getting from the Sakias. Fine for me to have my to have my Cerno back there for now, as long as I can level up my racing to help deal with things. That is squeezing my towers is not the best, but I can deal with it. Especially since my racing can keep leveling up and dealing with it. And I can also buy more Alice's if I need to body block. <laughs> now I'll move my Ran back, that way she can get that speed buff. Today, there's a huge plot them we found a lot of the black story of one of our players. Well, depending on how that story is exactly go for you, that can easily be a huge, you know, like wards position or like both in the good and bad directions now. I already redesigned this stuff. You already redesigned it, also? 
Well, I came back to uh, I came to redesign my overlays, and it turns out I thought I thought it was still using my old design, but I guess I put in the boxes like I wanted to. Nice. I got my racing smat stuff, so that's actually a lot of stable damage. I need to get more AoE pressure out here right now. I can bomb some dealing with just fine things in my corner setup, but if I can get my Utsuho, I'll be working a little bit more in overtime. So that'd be really, really beneficial. Also, if I could just make sure that she doesn't get time stopped, it would also be a very valid, valid, valid thing. Now, I should be spending a lot more AP actually helping out my towers, considering that there is a lot of green mana on the field, which allows me to do my exact job of helping them out. So I'm going to be free frying a lot more, and also summoning a few more Alice's to help body block the corner ends. Afterwards, maybe a Kenshi actually on the corner too, to hold this out. And I should stabilize just as long as I'm able to priority select the targets that you need the most deal with, like Sati is to get really close to disabling my racing. But that is the biggest fear that I have right now. Uh, if my racings get disabled, they are that's a problem because they are my biggest damage dealers out of all my characters right now. It shouldn't be too bad because I can see that thanks to Cerno and Ran holding down the entire left lane. I can just focus on the top and bottom, and that just only leaves the big pumpkins left, which I can deal with if it was silly. One of our players is Sun Pirate King, and oh my goodness, that's a war dump. It's <laughs> wow. That's a that's a lot. That's a lot, Pyro. <coughs> right here, here. For the meantime. We get one of my favorite characters in the game, Marissa. She is a very unique character who will be replacing my Tenshi for now. And the fact that she is a straight beam tower. And what do I mean by beam tower? We'll get to see here in just a second. So now I'm, gonna, I'm gonna guess that they fire a beam. She fires a beam straight forwards, but the unique thing is that right, the unique thing is the result of two fun interactions in this game. One of them being her level 5, which makes the beam globally ranged. So it can hit on the entire other side of the map. And then the other thing being that I have the upgrade, which makes it so that whenever I pick up towers, they are still able to function. So, as I'll demonstrate here, if I get my Marissa to level 5, I can literally use her as a walking beam cannon wherever she goes. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to get introduced to new mechanics on this map here. The main thing that you should be able to see is these purple springs, which are transfer springs. They make it so that whatever damage your tower deals, it is swapped. So if you deal Danmaku or physical damage, it deals magical damage instead, and vice versa while you are still on there. You also have what these are stones. We've already seen them before, but the main thing with it is that these buff enemies. As long as they exist, they will buff the physical armor of enemies to level 3, which is really bad. Unless we use these transfer springs. The main thing about it is that I can't get rid of this one here, for instance, as it doesn't have any sigil. But for these ones here, I can blow up with bombs if I find them along the way. This is a... Three, uh, three enemy entrance map, but two main lanes to defend, with enemies also able to spawn from this little graveyard here, which is the other bigger problem. So, we're just gonna have to deal with crowd control on that end, but for now, it will just come from the very entrance of the Starwood Devil Mansion, right over here, as we can see. Now, Marissa, you can see, she deals straight damage going all the way forwards, but since I have the upgrade to pick her up, I can just use her as a mobile attack cannon and a level 5 tower that just moves to every whim of mine. The main downside to Marissa is that she is a very much so fire and forget character to where while, uh, while on the ground, as soon as she starts firing in one direction, that's the only direction that she's able to shoot from. But with this silly way, 
I'm able to basically alter the trajectory of her with the upgrade that lets me carry around any towers and fire still. And I can just leverage a level 5 tower as a walking artillery beam. Which is not uh, which is not even a game break because it's probably intended with just how it works. Whichever enemy she walks onto, she will always fire in their general direction, so as long as I ha can rotate on a 360 axis around, I can just use her to fire, which is nice and easy. <coughs> Note that this isn't a perfectly foolproof strategy, as enemies that are resistant to magic are still like are still gonna be a natural counter to her, just because of the way that she does work being a magic user itself. And she has only one tower, not to mention that of course, as long as I cheery her, she is I, I am unable to do any of my own attacks myself. But otherwise, it is just a very, very you could say cheesy strategy, but it is a strategy that definitely does work and really helps out for the future missions. And the fact that she's a global range at level 5 as well means that you can place her on one side of the map and just easily have her shoot on a single lane all the way down, for instance, which really helps. So much so that I'm just going to buy a second Marissa and start the process all over again. Now that enemy did drop a bomb there, so I'm going to use it to start getting rid of some of these defense shrines for the enemies. The main thing you can see is her beam range is only limited as he is low level, but the higher level that I get her, she will get more range up until it gets global to the entire map. So you can see right here, the way I position this Marissa is so that she, way she takes care of the entire bottom lane. So she will hold down this bottom lane for me completely so while I deal with everything else on this top lane. Perfect strategy. It's like I almost played the game before. I mean, now the main disadvantage to Marissa is that she is a ground only tower. She can only attack grounded units. Meaning that for any flying units or anything like that or so, I'm gonna have to rely on my other towers to really help me out here. So this is why I'm gonna need this racing, or I'm just gonna need to use my own abilities. Sad, or I could also have like Duran help me out here too. <coughs> but for dealing with much of the ground fodder, Marissa is one of the best units in the game in my opinion just for that sole fact of being able to just completely clean up the ground and help out in that regard. Because even if her beam is shooting along a flying enemy's path, she, once again, is not able to damage them in any way, shape, or form, which is a real darn shame, but it is a shame that it does make sense. I'm gonna want to focus up on getting my race in a little bit higher though because it is annoying dealing with these bats and I'd rather not have any units really go away. What I am going to do though is use more of these bombs at rid of these enemy shrines around. And now we're gonna get introduced to a new enemy type, Patchouli. She is a flying unit that is a flying support unit for the enemy team. What does she do exactly? She provides shields to any air units. Well, not just any air units, but just any units in her vicinity while she is living. Which, I don't know, is kind of a big problem. So we're gonna have to really take care of her as quickly as we can. Because especially paired with her library assistant in war, Kawakuma, that means you'll be having to deal with bats that can spawn very much so way down your way. Which is definitely not the best. And as you can see here, as much as I do of my Marissas, I am starting to leap through a little bit. I'm gonna have to burn my spells down here, unfortunately. If I want to keep my perfect record, which I'm not going to. Unfortunately, I'm gonna leap those bats, but you don't have to get perfect 20 to make it through. But those patches are going to cost me three flies, so I'd rather not. I'd rather not let them go through at all. So let's bring up our cavalry here. Try to stun them up as much as I can and deal with the uh, and deal with these Kawakumas. 
next big upgrade I'm gonna wanna shoot for is to get my Cerno to level 5, that way I get the slowing. Here I go. But now we're gonna deal with another annoying enemy type, which is Fly uh, Flans. Flans' favorite, Fondre Scar Scarlet Fondre. Yeah. They are an annoying unit type in that they are uber fast, and they are designated with the modifier of instant kill. As in, they will instantly kill any summon, any summon type unit with one hit. They are scary. You see, I'm restarting the level because I'm not going to get a three star just because of that. I shouldn't have bought two Marissas. I should have actually diversified my damage portfolio. <laughs> but Marissas, all right, but they are super scary for many reasons. That being, you know, if you're playing with like a summon build, like having a few Alice's helping to block you and block the way to your lanes, yeah, she will just kind of say no thank you and shred them all and make sure that you don't get to play the game either. Which is not the best. So you can see there, even though I am singing the praises of my Marissas, there's only so much I can do, and especially if I can't micromanage them completely in full, the defense strategy easily starts to fall apart. Like, way easily falls apart. So we're gonna pivot our strategy a little bit in that case then. Marissa can still shred these lanes early game, and I'm gonna try to build up a Cerno to help deal with the air units, as I can not only hit them, of course, with Cerno, but slow them down. Afterwards, the next best course of action would be to, of course, build a Racin to be a consistent damage source, and then I'll work towards maybe investing into a cheap hours or two, that way we can at least have some respite from dealing with, uh, from dealing with the Foyans, and be able to stall her, even for a second. Because she still does stop on her tracks to attack, which means that that's one more extra second for a Marissa to be potentially free firing at her, for instance. And see here with us destroying these damage shrines. Like, well, these armor shrines, I should rather be saying. Trying to work myself up. That way, if I do get any enemies awakened, it's not going to be too much of a problem. Oh my but, god. This is gonna be what I've gotta work with for now. What's up, sweetie? So, <clears throat> I just learned that respite and respite are the same word, but it's said differently in Britain and America. Yeah. I was about to like, jump on your ass, and then I looked it up, and I was like, "Wait, you guys just say it differently?" What? Yeah, we kind of do. Like we just do. <laughs> Why don't you jump on my ass on stream? Sweetie, we're professional here. We are a professional, not stuff say so enough stream. I say that, but you're on here, so I don't know about that last part, honestly. Hello. Popo. 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 Are you kidding? <laughs> Alright, you buy an hour to buy some time on the side. Otherwise, the next thing is, honestly, a Yamame wouldn't be the worst to have on the corner here. Because then, I can at least have some poison damage sitting on the foyers. Which, honestly, is something that's pretty useful and nice. Alright, Koakumas are coming up now, so... Yeah, start positioning so forwards. Nice. And once again, I have Cerno on the corner here. She is made to slow down any of these wannabe attackers as we come up and help deal with the oncoming mountain pressure. As well as I'm gonna get a Ran here, that way we can get Chen to support on this side as well. Then we're gonna start burning my bigger spells like the Fantasy Seal, so I don't have to deal with Satya for instance. This is really great to get on this map, of course, since with that one open lane just right down the SPM, we can easily just deal with it and have a little bit more leeway room to spare. Okay, I'm gonna level up my Yamame all the way up if I can. Because with her being able to fire down almost just straight down the entire lanes, it really goes forwards in helping me establish a good presence on the rest of the map. As you can see, she basically has almost a straightaway going down one lane, two lanes, and almost a third, even if I want to position one all the way down to. Alright. 
start to point up. Now you can see here with this big positioning, I didn't read easily get rid of any of the patch jewels before they can buff the Toa Kumas. But what I'm working for now is that plan to spawn. Because Chen can only do so much in Stoner for a second, so this is why I already bought that Alice earlier. That way the Shanghai dolls can absorb a lot more of the pressure that comes our way. Plan comes along. You don't want to stun her with the <coughs> only Odama. And you can see right there, with that extra little killing power, I'm able to kill the player before she even breaks through my defenses. And I have a lot stable of a setup this time around. Buy another hour to the side just to be sure. Otherwise, we'll get our Ran max level. And we'll go ahead and place her right here on this corner. I don't necessarily need her to be on the spring. But the main thing is that what we are looking at is just a little bit of slightly, uh, slightly magically armored enemies at times. So I want to keep this damn portfolio still mostly magic based. Main enemies this way here is you can see flying enemies on top with pumpkin enemies on the bottom. But as long as I manage where my Marissa is firing, I should be able to deal with it just fine. I said Marissa does seem enticing, but the main thing is, is that with the Witch Yokai talent from the, ma uh, from the Mage Tree, I'm able to get this extra little bit of consistent damage off because I got my 5th level Marissa free, is the main thing to remember still. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to spend uh, about 350 points for her. <laughs> and so that's a huge part in why I'm able to make this strategy especially so work. The fact that I'm able to just power spike super early and not have to deal with the otherwise bigger consequences of jimping myself with a one tower setup. You can see here, zombies are starting to spawn from this grave site, which is why I need to unlock the transfer screen over here. And also why I put the Alice over here nice and early. I'll put her on her screen as well, that way she can help to deal with untoward enemies. We can see, we're gonna get enemies spawning in from all the grave sites now, which is gonna be a bigger problem than expected. As we say, we're gonna have to deal with them. We're gonna start, I wouldn't say exactly leaking, as we aren't necessarily leaking any of them through yet, but they are gonna start making their ways through, and they're gonna be a little bit of a problem, but you can easily see where they're gonna spawn thanks to these little paths and the gravestones. So as long as I get myself an hour to buy some time, then my towers can easily start dealing with them on a bigger scale. With the plan dealt with, all I need to do is move my Melissa down here. That way she can easily start firing at the bigger pumpkin lords. And oh no, we have a Remelia now. Main thing is that she doesn't share the instant kill property as her sister, but instead, I mean, uh, well, I heard him it is that once she does die, she turns into five vampire bats upon her death, befitting of herself. But also, you really got kind of annoying. If it's easy to make it far down your lane, you have to deal with all of that, and you better hope that you have the anti-air capabilities to deal with it too. Let's see here, we are wave 14 of 15. I'm doing pretty good in keeping everything down on the wraps right now. Marissa, of course, having a global laser really helps take the cake here, but on with having a lot of my towers almost there to the max level, I'm never going to complain about that. The main thing is, as Florian makes her way over, we're going to try to preserve the Shanghai dolls. One of them did die, but that's no big deal. As I'm able to get rid of the rest of them, as you can see here, another Florian starts making her way. I'm gonna let these ones die before respawning them by upgrading the palace so I can deal with them a little bit better. And these vampire bats are easily becoming a sort of bigger problem. So I'm just gonna spawn in another Cerno to really start slowing them all on the way. That's my plan. Now I should be pre firing a lot more, but the main thing that I'm looking at here is the boy is gonna be the biggest problem net, so if I put my own Mio Dama on there, I can stun both the grounded form and the bats. Now go ahead and burn the fantasy seal because that patchouli spawning the shields for them is also not the best thing for me to have to deal with right now. You can see that is bats already starting to almost leak their way through my main line of defenses. 
a perfect beam by Marissa. Which buys me a lot more time. And with that, we are almost through this one headed mission. Awesome. Find myself another Miss uh, Marissa just for the kids. But you see that with just actually a little bit more balance for Team Tom, I have no problems managing this wave out. I just got greedy last time and just wanted to spawn two Marissas for the heck of it. But Marissa, oh Marissa, how broken of a unit you are. We love using Marissa here in this house. Now, the next upgrade that I will be going for is I will be going for Muddle Nemesis, which is increased spell damage towers damage to enemies who have no magic resist, which is just a straight buff in almost all aspects. Now, the main thing here is that we are now going to the entrance of Star Wars Devil, uh, to the interior of Star Wars Devil Mansion, but this is a very interesting level to where we have to deal with basically six lanes of enemies all together here. I am going to go back real quick for a second though, because the main thing that I want to do is I want to actually hit the challenge modes of these different uh, missions and whatever. Because usually, if we look at it, I have four other playable characters, one of them being DLC I can get, but I want to show them off later too. But now we are going to go back and hit these challenge modes. First and foremost, the human village where I only get Reason, Kagasa, Tenshi's. I remember having trouble with this one last time around, but with a little bit more meticulous planning, I should be able to manage this better. The main thing I'm really gonna have to look at though is, first and foremost, because she's the only mage here, I can spend away a good amount for Grand to be level 5, but otherwise I need to get my Reason all the way up as much as I can, and I'm gonna buy two of them. One up top and one below. Because, I'm sorry, what's up, Sweetie? I'm just looking at the interior of the, uh, the mansion. Just thinking back to being lost in puppet dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got lost in there. I mean, that quite literally is Tohu or getting lost in the Star Wars Double Mansion. Mm -hmm. Alright, now the main thing that I'm going to be looking at here is I'm going to be trying to use that advantage that... that Ran has of being able to basically chain her attacks to enemies. I'm gonna try to leverage that as much as I can to damaging them. But the main damage dealer that I'm and that we're gonna really have here is our Tenshi, who we're really gonna have to leverage as much as possible. Because I only have the one Ran, which is gonna be the biggest source of damage that I have with being able to beat the natural AoE tower. And I also only told her too early. Alright, that sucks. I only have the one life, so I'm gonna have to make it work in a very cramped work environment here. But the main ploy is that you are trying to make your Tenshi as powerful as possible to deal with all the incoming enemy waves. However, since I do have the Yokai Mage, and since I can basically get the level upgrade completely for free, we are more concerned with leveling up the Ran to help deal with the Onslaught. We want to pop her down maybe at like this choke point here on the left side of the can. If possible, but otherwise until then, we are relying on our Tenshi's mainly for damage. I'll actually bring Tenshi around. Now we can't exactly rely on Tenshi completely because of the fact that there is flying enemies later on in this mission, so I'm gonna have to buy up a few races, but Tenshi is going to have to damage deal as much as she can. That, and we're just gonna have to stall for time because we don't have the biggest damage portfolio to deal with all these enemies with how limited our resources are. So what's really gonna come down to is leveraging Kogasa whenever we can as well to stall for time and buy time for our towers to then make bigger impacts and waves. here that's gonna be a good influx of points and I'm gonna try to spend them over on making sure that we do not leave because Tenshi naturally is a huge range AoE tower and I want to leverage that as much as I can by having her move around 
and being able to deal with the bigger enemies Ooh, right? The room is over here. As soon as I can, I'm gonna move her back up to the corner here. <coughs> and I'm gonna immediately now look over and see that I'm going to have to deal with these giant Kadamas. There's also the Kaduros here, which I do not want to talk about, because I hate Kaduros, and they all deserve to die in fires. With how much damage, or with how much of a kicking that they can take. The Kadamas should be another story though, as I can easily deal with them once I move Rian up. But otherwise, I need to take care of things like the Vampire Bats a lot earlier. So that means this racing needs to just immediately start going up. Plus, the added benefit of dealing with those vampire bats early is, uh, uh, blowing up the racing to deal with the vampire bats is that I then get to have a really good racing for dealing with the, you know, with our swimming enemy types, if we don't remember them. Uh, like a Tsuhime's. But because they are grounded, which like our Tenshi's can also serve as a notable substitute to deal with them if needed. Besides providing a few shields, the only big problem with the uh, Watsuhimes is that they do deal damage to summons. So as long as I can keep Chen out of range of them, we should be fine. Now for extra security, I will plant a another Kragasa around the corner. But she's mainly just here as a extra security precaution. And not really to do too much else, because as long as as long as I can stall for just a second more. That way my ranch can actually start dealing the bigger damage for instance, we'll be fine. You can see here, right, for example, Chen does die, but it's enough time to stall the dire stage from really doing anything of note. Now afterwards, I will move my Jason up here to help deal with the enemy ensemble a little bit more. And then we'll also get a level 5 10 sheet to help deal with things a little bit move Chen back, that way I can easily just look at the broader picture here. And you can see, these Meiwings are not going to be fun to deal with. We level up our... No, we level up our Kodasa to hopefully start doing them back. And I will grab a bird fantasy he seal here, that way I can easily get another level going. You can see here, Race is out of range, so I will move her back. As Rian can only do so much, because her role is going to be mostly on crowd control and not on main DPS. By firing a little bit more into our Kagasa, I can stall for that bit more time. You can see those spheres are doing great work in keeping these Meiwings bad so I don't have to focus on the left lane as much. And I can instead keep the focus on making sure that my bigger damage dealers, such as my Tenshis and my Reasons, can do their jobs effectively. Starting out the ground sets. We have nobody else as we actually finished the mission earlier than I expected. Very happy with that. Now I am trying to get myself these extra ribbons so I can move all on the way and be able to deal with SDM because the interior mission is a lot harder than no, it's like a good power spike in terms of a uh, difficulty spike, so we're really gonna have to work as carefully as we can, and that's why I want to grind up these extra, not just face, these extra uh, towers, uh, the, these extra upgrades for our towers and such. That's really the main problem, and what I'm restricted to here is Cerno, Ran, and Alice. Cerno's probably going to be the bigger one to level up here, as getting that soloing field is going to be really, really good. And Ran, well, these are all giant enemies just about, so I don't need Ran as much. It's probably just going to be mostly Cerno is what I'm looking at here for the mission. The key here is pretty much useless, so I'll just start to toss it to the side. But for now, it's really just going to be a Cerno show. Being able to slow down the enemies, and if I possibly can, we'll pull up Owls, that way she can function as a pseudo range tower with the uh, Horai Dolls. Horai Dolls? Horai Dolls. Still here, sweetie. 
Question mark. Oh, I was muted. Uh, you know, you kind of do uh, this a lot more than you mean to. Yeah, I don't even say anything. Like, I'm silent anyway, but like when I try and answer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I'm just letting you talk back to her. Hmm, hmm. See here, this is gonna always gonna be able to really help us out from the distance. The only problem that I'll be dealing with here is the onset of all of these bigger enemies from the sides. If I can, I'd like to get this Cerno also to match level, that way we can easily deal with that a little bit better. But it may turn to be where that the story is, we just need to reprioritize where we stand on these on what we do damage wise. Fancy seal is coming up, so I am gonna use it on this cluster of enemies nearby here. And with that, I will also buy myself another Alice and a Rand to help deal with the ongoing onslaught. Don't be sat here, I'm not gonna fear for leaking as I have enough individual damage to deal with it. But the bats are a whole nother story which I need to reroute my Cerno for. Because I have no way of dealing with them myself. So, we can get Cerno to help deal with it. Get Alice spawned here, that way we can deal with the pumpkin head. I need to stick up one up another Cerno to take the mantle as quickly as we can. Because with that, or with Cerno number one being back there playing defense, I need to have enough room for Cerno number two to get back on the attack that I stole, so the bats never even get here to begin with. With that issue sorted out, we can already move on back. And now we can actually start focusing on the upgrades that are going to matter, such as getting Alice up, that way I can have a Horai doll to help clear out with the onslaught that's going to be incoming. Stuff like that, or how I'm going to use Fancy Seal here on this little corner, that way I can hit all of them, and start working on getting a Chen, or a Chen, I open up Ran. Enemies are quite big, but it's not going to be the biggest problem that we're dealing with here. And I don't want to move up my Alice necessarily yet, because packing on those dolls can kind of be a little obtuse at times. Now you can see here, I'm going to have these girls finally firing out. Another fantasy seal is not going to be bad, and I can't exactly move my Ram too far up, but I can technically, I'm not technically, I am just going to pick her up straight up and use that as my reverence instead. Now make sure that the bats are getting frozen along the way is the main point here. And then with another fantasy seal off cooldown, we're going to take the chance to stun our Koakumas that are coming along the way. And make sure that the bats that they do spawn aren't going to leak out if we possibly can. But your concern here, Sophia is coming along here. I'd rather her not freeze any towers if we possibly can. So as soon as we get the Mo, I would have actually loved to unmute Dama, but I need to stall the bigger end of enemies after coming around over here. I'm gonna start leveling up this Cerno on the side here. My AP is running out pretty rapidly, but if I can just keep slowing down all these enemies that keep coming from the corner, I should be fine. Stun the mailings, and then we will just spin the seal exactly so here. And afterwards, I will get myself a ram for the extra AoE damage that I can do to this. Not bad stuff at all, don't you think? It is a bunch of big enemies, but with a good enough setup to slow them down as their big size doesn't count for their slower speed, I can easily deal with this wave of enemies not too bad, honestly. Not too bad, we get through it pretty fine. Did you say something, by the way, sweetie? Yeah, I said that it was nice. I was coming in and what you were saying. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go to bed.
not the worst mission and quite faint rare. I also really do like this map. This is about how choke pointy it is. Real quick, I hate the Dark Force bonus one. Kinda don't wanna do it. Star Fortress ain't the worst, but it is annoying, so I will at least do it. Main thing here is that you can see we start with just bats. Bats, bats, bats all going around. They are the fat bat varieties, which means I'd like to have like Ran. I'd like to have that combo of Grayson, Ran, and Cerno to deal with them. So that is going to be the exact strategy that I do employ and put forward. The bigger importance is on the Raisin, as I can deal a lot more damage overall using her than I can with the Ran, but don't get me wrong because I'm still going to want to take advantage of both their abilities. Main thing here is that since I can't get rid of the buff on this transfer spring here, I'm going to want to keep my Raisin on it if possible, so that when they get around to the corner, I can deal with them a little bit more effectively if needs to be. That physical buff is kind of really darn annoying. See here, I'll get enough blue points to get raced in level 5, which will be a good power spike further. Now I can just one shot all the small bats in succession. And you can see here, now it's just gonna be a smaller enemy horde that we deal with. What do I say? This is filled with a few Kalakumas though, so I'm not going to take it lightly, we're just going to take our time to level up our Ran, for instance. Now, although there is going to be Pumpkin Mask to come on and be a bit of a nuisance later on, it really ain't anything off the skin, because I can just have Ran be our damage dealer for it. Because usually, on any other day, I'd be using a Marissa, but kind of can't, because it's a challenge road, so a challenge mission, so, yep. These are the circumstances we're dealing with. <laughs> what I will do, however, though, is I will use Ran on the corner here. As even though that they do have max physical armor, with her being a magical type of unit, I can easily make a little bit more work go into dealing with them. She should be able to stall a good amount, and especially with Chen backing her up as well. So this should be a pretty easy choke point to get to hold down. In the meantime, I will look at starting to get another race in on the ropes. That way I don't have to deal with these bats as much. I say as I do see patchoulis coming through. That's a whole nother story entirely. See here. Elixir is starting to come to a bigger fault, so I will move my Ran all the way back up. And I will go also go ahead and start burning some of my other abilities on the corner side here. Again, I'm going to have my Ran move back down so I can deal with the horde of enemies down here. I could, I'd love to level her up, but the main concern that I am looking at is for whenever that Dramelia does pop up around us. We've also got some zombies are spawning on the side here, which really isn't helping the case as much. You don't have to burn a fantasy see our uh, own real Dama to deal with them a little bit more. That or I could also just move Serena down. We're in Fantasy Seal just as Remilia spawns. That is unfortunate timing, but it's quite quickly whatever. We're just gonna have to deal with it. The bats are looking to possibly leak through, so I'm gonna want to move Cerno back to slow down Remilia. I'll go ahead and spend a good amount of my MP shooting at her. Is it gonna be enough? Yes, it is. Barely enough to stop to stop her, which, quite frankly, it's not something I should be happy for. I'll buy another Cerno to start supplementing the front lines, but otherwise I'm going to need to get these races just pumping, as having two of them just feels like a really big liability right now. Setting Cerno to easily buy a little bit more time though is very, very welcome indeed, 
That way these Torkumas don't do as much damage as they possibly could. The main problem here that you're gonna see is, of course, if you see that the zombie masks are already respawning on mass. So then that's the best thing to do is just buy a few here to start dealing with them. Namely, I'm just gonna put the hours on the corner here. That way, the ones on the little uh, the way the ones in the little corner zone aren't gonna be as much of a problem as I'd expect them to be. And then with a little bit of a finish, you see, I should be able to deal with the Remelia a little bit better. Not to mention if Chen also body blocks her, that is wonderful and fantastic work. I get myself almost another level 5 racing. And with this, I should be able to choke point this area pretty easily. Of course, the only concern to really look at is the bats, but with us getting our third racing now at level 5, I should be able to deal with them on a much better scale. All that I really need to look at now is this one Remoria. I think I should be able to do it, even if I need to buy an Alice to help stall a little bit. Fancy Seal is coming back off cooldown, so I'll burn that. And it's only Ozama to hit that Dramelia. And my cooldowns are gone for my active abilities, I've mentioned me being basically out of AP. But with the money that I earned from that wave and basically clearing it out, it's just one more Rumeoya, and I should be good on this level. <coughs> oh, fine enemies. Why must you be so nerve wracking? Why must you be so nerve-wracking, flying enemies? Alright, alright, alright. That's another star, though, so I'll buy fully armed for the summon units. And I'll move on to the Strywood Devil Mansion for the meantime. Once again, this is a huge map with basically seven lanes on it. You can see they are coming down the entrance, but, it's only, but it, can, it basically converges into a dual two-lane that goes straight up the middle. The one good thing though is that we have a Senor ally who is a limited time on this map, which is a single Amelia Strywa Tower herself. She comes in at level 2 and she is basically a beam cannon. She does a single heavy fire hit, but if I choose to level her up all the way, I can actually use the Denigar Spear itself, which is a piercing high damage spear as the name implies as you can see right there a whopping 600 damage straight up with their normal auto attacks doing a total of 800 damage on their own she is going to be a big cornerstone in defending this map but the main thing is that she cannot do it alone i'm gonna have to supplement a good amount of her offense with towers that can well support us on the sides and some of those mailings early for instance though and as long as I can help deal with like the smaller targets, she will still continue to one-shot all of the enemies, as you can see right there. The main thing that I will need to keep my wits about though, is defending the sides. So, by prepping up some rands, I will look to basically have one defender on each side, as I will have to deal with a lot of enemies coming in through. For now though, until those enemies do come up, I'll have the rands Hope stand guard down here and deal with a bit more supplemental damage. Because Remelia can only do so much by herself. So if we can pour out some of the chaff for her, then that will greatly help us in the future. The main thing I'm gonna try to abuse here is the target selection, such as if I can have her attack uh, such as by trying to limit her range, if I can have her attack the bigger priority targets, such as the May wins, then we can easily deal with the bigger priorities all on the lines here. So I can do things like cleave my attacks to deal with the smaller fairy maid groups. Then that will be a much bigger help in managing and leveraging the cooldown that I Rumi has. She basically only has right that one double auto attack burst every so often thanks to just, well, how Rumiolia works as a tower. So I'm really just going to have to be as careful as I can in using her. And especially so, whenever that Spear of Gunnager does come off cooldown, I need to be leveraging it as much as possible. 
As you can see, it's all these enemies going down in a straight line rapidly. If I can line them up perfectly and just get them to all go, or get them to all be hit by Romelia, it would go a long way in kind of helping our defenses. I will unlock the speed spring, that way I can have a better defense. And yes, sweetie. I am going to sleep now, so I'm just going to meet up. Um, feel free to resize my little sleeping head. All good, all good. I'll get that in time. Night, baby. See ya, see ya. Alright, so, you see the softy is here, having a bit of a problem. But if I just start moving my powers around a little bit, I should be able to deal with it just a bit better. The main thing that I am working to do here is just really slow the enemy down as much as possible. Marissa never hurts to have on the side here. But if I can just install a little bit more time, it would be wonderful. Now the main thing is, I should be able to have things dealt with with those bats. But, if possible, I'm gonna have Amelia try to hit these bigger pumpkin heads with her attacks instead. I think we're able to deal with them perfectly though. So that is totally fine. Instead, I'll just have to wait for her to work their way up. But, if I can have her do her piercing attack down the line, down the lane, and deal with these bigger heads. And that is all that I do ask for out of her. Real quick though, I am working up on a Marissa to try to deal with any of the bigger enemy types that do come our way. As it still is a pretty wide open map, and if I can leverage a, a Mei Wing to help out on those ends, it is a huge boon for us. In the meantime though, since that there is no, uh, what's his face? Since there is no springs to bomb at, I would just instead use the bombs for pure raw damage instead. And with that, I freeze up my Marissa to basically be my walking muse and guide as I use her as our global artillery beam as before. <coughs> now you can see here the bigger problem that we're gonna have to deal with is a lot more bats coming along the way. On with Koakuma. So, as we said before, we will start working up on these Graysons. I go ahead and move her down to start shooting a little bit more. But, I'll be looking for my Rand to really help us out. Not Koakumas, those are Patchoulis we have coming in. Now, well, we have Patchoulis right now, but Koakuma is just down the line in just a second here. So, as exactly so, I just have my Grayson come uh, my Rumioia come on here. Jet SA level 5 Racing to help deal with the incoming onslaught, and instead I will be carrying around Racing, tossing her around bit by bit. Since my own basic autos cannot reach the air, I will instead just attack the Koakumas by that extra little bit of time, that way the towers don't have to. And even though I run out of AP, that is still going to be a good amount of damage I have done to the ground. Now you can see right here, this is going to be the bigger problem that I'm going to have to deal with here. We have ourselves those fairy maids that are going to spawn in on the sides. I'm going to move a ran down here. That way I can have my Grayson's and my Remoria deal with things on the bottom. But otherwise, what I want to possibly do is if I can line up my Marissa, that way I can strike all the fairy maids in just a straight line like this. Doing so, will allow my ran to be freed up here on the ground just that little bit more. And I don't have to worry too much about the ground for it because I know it'll be covered otherwise. So I will have to spend a little bit of time just shooting down on the ropes. You can see, if possible, Grayson will take the bait for the Sakia, meaning that Rumelia will get all the free fire time to be able to just hit on the ground for it. I'll probably reorient things a little bit more though. And just put maybe like a Cerno instead. That way we can deal with things on a much more stable spectrum. But that's going to be what we really are working with when it comes to our enemy types here. Next biggest upgrade is I will get the Cerno leveled up. That way I can already have her casting her slow zone. 
because it's going to be really that and as you can see right there we just need to watch where those friends are spawning if we can stop there if we can stop them from really doing too much when they spawn in then that is all that i am asking for out of my towers no much quickly though with those Sathias spawning i need to just focus my fire and attention on them as if they disable even more than two of my towers, that means that the uh, that the toy end that you can see going up on the lane is going to cause a lot more problems than I need. Otherwise, once the Satyas are dealt with, I need to move my towers up is what I was going to say because you can see those oh the Rumiorias are also looking through because apparently that's what they're doing. That sucks. I'm going to have to restart, otherwise I'm going to get my three stars. <laughs> Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Alright. That's gonna be try number two in that case, then. But you see, like, where the general strategy of this mission is just gonna lay out. It's just all gonna be dependent on Romelia getting her big hits with the Spear of Genagir. Because her insta kill potential is, of course, amazing. But there's almost so much that she can do by herself, which is why I need to build myself a good stable support cast to help her. The main thing is I don't necessarily need to hold on the ground floor because I can easily hold up here instead, leveraging the use of wide races to deal with the bigger enemies. But I want to get greedy there. I should have known better. <coughs> but I will leverage as much as I can early, such as just calling any wave as early as I can. And if I can as well, position it so that the Spear of Gunnager can hit in the straight lines, for instance, too. I want me to just deal with any of the major enemy threats. Because those main wins aren't going to kill themselves, are they? The pumpkin heads start coming. A Cerno can easily help out with a little bit of crowd control. Alright, plan is, is to let her fire Spear of Genadir as straight forward as possible. Get all the pumpkin heads in a line, perfectly so, as I would have wanted. And we will start using our abilities to slow the enemies down to, if we can. Genadir just got used, so I'm gonna want to... Well, actually no, I don't have to wait too long now. I will do is start using some of my AoE cleave on my autos to deal with the fairy maids. That way we don't have to. So level 5 Serena, which means I'll get that infinite slowing zone. I'm gonna try to use that as much as possible to buy as much time as possible, of course. The main thing here is I need to get my racing leveled up. Glad we burn fantasy seals so the pumpkins just aren't a bigger problem at all. Because the ma next main thing is I'm going to have to look at when those Satyas start coming in. As you can see, that's really good and fortunate timing right there. But I need to deal with them a lot sooner before they get to freeze right Cerno and go, for instance. So if I can consistently get quick kills on them like that. That is going to be the biggest boon that I can really just have to offer. But now that we are going to have these bigger, bigger enemies start coming in, the main thing that I'm going to have to look at now from a worrisome angle is retreating backwards to where I can unlock those cages with keys and start looking at those windows. Because this time around, I don't have a Marissa. I just have a Cerno and a Raisin kind of watching the sides. Now, though I can get a Marissa up, it still is kind of a dicey situation since I don't have that exact stable AoE to like, help us out. I would love to have the AoE though, which is why that's going to be the next plan, but after I buy a Alice or two to help hold down the front. Because I don't want any enemies leaking up and around, so I'll buy two Alices and then we'll start I love you all! And so, nine months, Twitch baby, how you doing, boy? Alright, let's start moving our towers back up. You don't want to watch the corner angle, so that's exactly what we're gonna have here. 
the three maids are gonna get thoroughly decimated. But if I can at least soften them up with cleaving attacks, that is gonna be the best thing I can ask for. Risa being able to just also beam them down is really, really useful. But until I get the global range, I I'm still kind of like aspiring way to really get to pop off with the talents that I want to pop off with. Now should be a fine enough time to go ahead and call it early since I'm just dealing with patches. But the main thing is that since I am raising a Marissa up, I am not getting any more any any anti-air focus. So I'm gonna want to juggle my three towers at the moment. Marissa being level five now is of course amazing. So I'm gonna want to use her to help deal with any of the Koakumas of goats that start spawning. That way, I can already have them dealing with vampire bats. No, fairy maids are already coming in, which is not the best thing. I'm gonna retreat my units back. That way I can at least look at everything together. And I am playing Tohu Tower Defense right now, so... With the main thing here being that I get Grimoria back up here, and I will gradually use a key to unlock the attack speed screen. Now, if I can have Marissa to shoot in a straight line, then I can kill all the fairy mage without having the Alice's get involved. And then I can also redirect my attention back towards the very middle whenever I get the chance. Not too bad. Once these two die, or hopefully these three, I should be able to look back at the center. Just ascertain if there's anything going on. Now I am able to avoid deal with these pumpkin heads. That way my Vermilia can continue shooting down the straight line that I instructed her to. But the main thing that I'm gonna have to work at next is just dealing with like the plans. Recent getting more recents is of course gonna be a bigger boon, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do next. And I'm gonna raise her up to a straight level five if I can. Just having her on the attack speed sprint, or uh, on the attack range sprints, is going to be a huge advantage to be able to deal with just the massive influx of enemies. But this is exactly why I brought Marissa up to level 5, so I can now deal with like the bigger actual size of waves and act as the bigger conduit for dealing with them. But for now, we're going to have to deal with the bigger problem that is, of course, the Remelias coming on by. If I can, the thing I'd love to be able to do is to just put a few Cernos down and have them be the bigger brunt of attack. A bigger, uh, be the bigger brunt that get that guy gets frozen from like Sakias and whatever. Not only will I be able to buy a little bit more time with these Cernos, but it also just gets to slow down or uh, uh, slow down the enemies. And once I get them up to five for the sowing fields. I can really start doing a lot more damage in that act in retrospect. For now though, I'm just going to keep melting the Sakias, making sure I have enough leeway room. Place her down real quick, get Cerno to level 5, and now all I need to do is just keep having Marissa's job be stable and melting all the fairy, the fairy maids that do come to the sides. Because what I need the Jason to be able to do is melt the fat vampire bats that do come along. But until they do make it there, all that I need to do is just make sure that I'm dealing with the fairy maids that spawn it. Just since their attention will be divided, I need to just make sure that Marissa's and uh, that uh, that my racings can deal with it. And now that the fairy maids have been dealt with, I can move that down. Just fire in that straight line. And hopefully continue melting all the enemies that come our way. A little, a little bit extra soon, we will be looking good. This is when I'm going to start investing into my other towers. So I, if I can get these palaces up, that way we have some Shanghai dolls to help join the fight for us. It would of course be amazing. Otherwise, I'm just looking to once again supplement the offense and as soon as the fairy maids start coming in on those top two window lanes, I need to just divert my attention. 
Until they do, though, being able to throw out the pumpkin armies that come in from the bottom with Marissa is going to be a real boon, as then I can just have my Romelia deal with the bigger heads. It's just all about micromanaging where I am, and especially so where my Marissa is at the moment. Because she is, of course, going to be the crux of the defense. Now that we see the fairy mage coming in, we'll just reroute where we are, have the global range get to just take effect, and let my race to just do all the work for me on those bottom sides. And Romelia, because Romelia is really the backbone of the, of the roster, if I may be honest. As you can see here, I am just making a lot more money. Which will go as far and wide as I can in my, in my investments. But we are really gonna have to deal with a lot of enemies. You can see plans already tunneling their way down the middle lane. So I need to just clear out as much room, deal with as much fodder as I can in terms of the sake is supporting them and such. I think I will go ahead and burn fantasy seal with Omeo Donald though. Even if they make it to the end, I'd rather than not, as they still have to get through five dolls. Uh, like five dolls, like five, like to a ten of total, thanks to the Alice's, but it's just a lot of damage that is just forthcoming and incoming, you know? Alright, boss time incoming in just a second here, but for now, I'm just gonna keep moving my units around. I need to start moving them down immediately, because we're gonna deal with two unknown spears making their way what are they you asked well they literally are just pumpkins with a leak and beer and they look like zoon <laughs> i need to just move all of my damage portfolio down as there is two of them they are the stage bosses and i need to just leverage as much time as i have to deal damage to them the main thing that you'll see is that they will throw many pumpkins along the way, but if I can just have Marissa help deal damage to the main bodies, where where my other towers deal with the other smaller pumpkins, then we should be fine enough. Fine enough, I say. But as you can see, the bosses are already at like about a half and a third respectively each. So all that I need to do is just have my Horai dolls, my Horai and Shanghai dolls from my Alice's, help deal with basically the muck and the trash, as I get my, as I just keep maneuvering that and making sure that my um, Romelia can deal with all the wheat and chaff. The key here is to each of the things do not leak, so if I can have the Cernos position at each opposite end, that would be amazing, of course. But with just one of these spears up, I should be fine to just reinforce it. Nice and easy enough. How long have you had this game? I've had it ever since, uh... <coughs> ever since our Christmas? Kind of like a Christmas gift to myself, I believe. If I do it once on my own... And this is my second playthrough on stream. No, second playthrough altogether, but it's my second one completely. So I'm playing it on stream. Now, first and foremost, we get a new tower, Nictori. C is a really fun tower, which I will replace my Yamame with. One of the harder tower defenses? Definitely so. And it's one of the more expressive ones, because if you want to think about it, Soul, it's like, it's like Kingdom Rush in a way. You have, like, you as you level uh, as you gain stars for beating the missions you have yourself four trees that you can spend those stars into to upgrade your towers you have two uh, three mission types of like normal you have like a hard mode where it's just like one wave only one life point and then a challenge mode where you can only use specific towers like kingdom rush along with the fact as well that you also get to play as basically a playable character hero unit that has that can actively affect the battlefield the main thing that really separates, uh... Oh, oh, I skipped through the story. You know, me, we started for you. But the main thing that really makes this game click very well is how the tower placement is. <coughs> because since you are summoning copies of the different Tohu characters and everything such like that or so, the coolest thing is that you can pick up the towers 
and move them to wherever you need them to be so you can consistently adjust your defense on the fly as you see as you need and see fit it's that and unlike kingdom rust where you could basically have each tower specialize into one path or the other each tower basically only has like only goes up to five levels but they power spike at different levels gaining different abilities or different things along the way as you level them up like for example the basic archer tower Rayson. At levels 1, 2, 3, she's just firing one single bolt. But at level 4, she starts firing two two attacks per... Right, 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 she fires two bolts per attack, basically. And at level 5, she fires four. So you're basically going to double and then quintuple her damage output. Uh, one AoE tower, uh, Ran. Level 3, she gets to summon her... She gets to summon her Shigami Chen, who gets to act at the summon tower, a body blocker. Cerno at level 5 here, or Professor Cerno in this instance here, she's your traditional ice sewing tower, but if you see at that abilities page right there, she can, at level 4, she can completely freeze enemies, and at level 5, she gets a permanent slowing aura completely. Complete with that, and then additional things such as, uh, such as, sorry, these are auras which can buff enemies or debuff your characters and such. Or, uh, or needing to unlock chests to uh, get extra resources as you play along the maps and such, makes for a very interesting and dynamic tower defense. That although, yes, it really helps to have a tohu background that way you know what each of the characters does in their roles. It is a really, really fun game that I have some good amount of hours into. It definitely is a good, challenging tower defense, but it is just a really, just great game in general, in my opinion. For now though, I will level up our new Natori. What she is, is that she is basically a burst Danmatu, so physical damage tower. What she does is that she fires basically like 10 bullets in shot, or like 10 bullets in her little cucumber gun as she is a Kappa. <coughs> so she fires them all, has to reload, and then she fires them all again. Basically a huge kind of like consistent machine gun spread. Leveling her up to level five, or level four and level five, means that whenever she does attack, and also the mountain fairies in a new region are just the normal enemies, means that with every attack that she does, she will knock the enemies back completely. So you can see right there, she shoots, then she has to reload, but you can see, even though if we are obstructed by the nature of these trees, I'll try to let these spirits go on by, she is able to knock them back, and although not too impressive against the normal enemy types, it really does help out later when you're dealing with like the bigger enemies or even kind of like what you could quantify as the mid bosses as she is then able to just completely start shutting them down from moving at all. Next big things I'd like to invest into if I can is I'm going to invest in a Cerno on the very corner here. That way I can have my constant slows and then of course you can see I have my Chen, uh, I have my uh Ran over here, that way whenever I can summon Chen on the choke point. Now I also am playing as our new playable character Yomu, Swordsman, who can deal 50 physical damage with a single swipe, but it does cost a lot of my active AP. And my two active abilities are a Cherry Blossom Flashing, which is basically a beam sword attack like this, Straight Line, or I also have Slash of the Eternal Future, which is a short range but very damaging burst attack. Now here we get our new, uh, and we get our new enemy type, which is a Minoriko or Aki. <coughs> she is one of the twin goddesses of fertility, and the cool thing about her is, well, step is step bold. First and foremost, she is a range tower, meaning that any summons on the field she will destroy. But the interesting thing that plays into the Tohu War is that being a god of fertility, if you leave her alive for long enough, she will she will passively just spawn some blue points for you, which is what you need to summon your towers and such. I kind of didn't let her live all the way through, but it's a really interesting mechanic in this game to where, uh, to where letting an enemy live actively rewards you. And her sister, Cizuha, you can see, she will spawn green points, which is basically your attack AP that you need for your basic attacks. Is a really interesting concept to where if I can let her live long enough, never mind, Tori's just gonna completely actually destroy her. 
to where if she lives long enough, yeah, she's able to just... She's able to generate some extra blue points on the fly for you. So if you want to make that extra economy play, it's actually a really interesting and cool dynamic. And I killed her too early again. Oops. Alright, next enemy type for this region. We have Hina's. Hina's are constantly spinning as the goddess of mis uh, as the goddess of misfortune. Her gimmick is that if she's attacking any of your summon towers, she is gonna do AoE damage in that spin. She is a very interesting character because she is moving at say a consistent pace, but Natori is an absolute counter to her as all of her momentum, as you can see, being an individual unit, just gets immediately stunted when Natori does start hitting her. Also does help when I just start joining on the auto attack frenzy. She can be a bit annoying on any other time, but just to have any type of swallowing tower can easily really help out. Now since he did drop a key, I will use that in this chest here. Gives me a few more bombs to get to bomb away at these encampments so I can better use my stuff here. The main thing is, is what? We get Chen now, now that Ran is level 3, so now Chen can be an active attacker within Ran's range. And I'll move my... Uh, I'll move my Natori up, that way she can start dealing with the top wave too if necessary. It's that, or I could also just kind of use my auto attacks as Yomu. She's definitely my favorite playable character out of the three. I haven't bought Professor Cerno because she is a paid DLC. But the main thing with her especially so is that... One, she has physical damage, but she can easily deal with bigger encamped groups altogether. Which is a huge boon in my opinion, because then I can just not have to worry about anything and instead just fire down my straight lines. Speaking of straight lines, we'll get ourselves a Marissa, that way I can just take care of the lane in one fell swoop. But just look at that, huge AoE, and then I can just use my attacks to cleave anybody that does come along my way. Which is just, I don't know, amazing? Now with those bombs that I did get, I'll just continue clearing down the lane in case I do weak enemies. Dark Ravens are going to start coming in, and you can see here, these are new air enemies, which are going to be a new thing we'll pain to deal with. We get a race in to deal with them, because I do not want to deal with them any longer. Now with these fairy spirits spawning in at the bottom, I will pay a little bit more attention to our circumstances here. I should be fine enough dealing with them. See, I do just have some Minoritos coming on the side, and I'll try to let them survive so you can see how they work before I send them the next waves. Because if they do live long enough. No, stop! Stop! Stop throwing the Minorito! Let her live! Let the child live! I can move her away, actually. I can actually move my towers away. I want them to do two complacent, though. Darn it. But if you see right there. Even if she did die, she did generate a blue point for us before she did die. Showing that if you let those towers, uh, if you let those enemies who have won enough, I mean Rico, she can generate some blue points for you, which does come in handy on some later missions to where you can let her just kind of live on the lane. But that's kind of fun here, because considering how we break into basically four defense lanes if we get far enough, checkpointing them as early as possible is a better option. By a long shot. Now, a quick level 5 racing will help us out with dealing with any of the flying enemies that come their way. And especially being on a attack spring will help out. Now, here, so if you're still around, I'm going to show I'm showcasing one of the coolest uh, interactions with the game. Of This is my Marissa. She is a traditional beam tower in the game to where she just shoots in a straight line completely and is able to. Well, damage any enemies that come within her line. However, of course, with any beam tower and any tower defense, that is their main weakness in that they are only firing in that one consistent straight line. <coughs> How do I remedy that? One upgrade that I did get earlier on, which is, uh, lets me, so, let's, uh, let's towers 
still fire at enemies even if I pick them up. Because usually when you're repositioning these towers on your head, you actually don't get to you, they actually don't get to shoot. But with that one specific upgrade, I can turn my Marissa Tower here into just a walking laser beam that I can just redirect at whatever enemy she's fighting. Which is a really cool interaction. But it only gets better when I level up to level 5, which turns her into a global global beam, which I can abuse. For instance. Which turns the game into a, a lot more fun affair in my opinion. That's like one way that the game really just like feeds in of itself with just how cool the effects work. And I think it's just really brilliant. Now, we're gonna get into a new enemy type, which is our, Mo our Momizi. They are three armor. Three regular armor completely, and that makes them a very dangerous unit type to have to deal with. Since you have uh, since you can't just beat them down with your regular units. So I'm gonna really just have to well, upgrade both both of my Cernos and my Marissa since they are my magic types. And also my my Ran, but I'm keep, kinda keeping her bat as kind of a fallback player. The main thing I'm gonna try to do here is slow things down by getting another Cerno to level 5. Oh, I picked up my racing, and that's not my Marissa. And then that way I can get two uh, sowing fields with my level 5 Cernos. Because otherwise, what I'm trying to do is just alternate where Marissa is to get to deal with the two lanes of enemy. As that, you can see the global range is, I don't know, pretty drop starting to that. Alright, throw Marissa to the side. Move Victory up, that way she can deal with both enemies. Uh, all enemies on the lane, and we'll just go ahead and level up our towers all together. Grand upgrade is 350, so we'll keep saving up further. Now, the thing I should note is that, once again, I still am an active spin on the battlefield, so I should still use my active abilities if I get a chance. But Marissa is still the consistent damage dealer since she works on a much slower cooldown than like my own individual AP, for instance. I just said, of course, the one downside to Marissa is that she still is ground only, so I'm going to have to focus in on her with alternating with where I am. Sorry that, or, well, you know. Heh heh <laughs> second Marissa. Now, I'm just telling you all of this here, so that way you can focus on the game quite better, but I do hope you are taking good notes, because I'm not going to repeat this for you. I expect a lot better from esports generals like you, Kaito. <laughs> you know, I really wish that you could tell me next time that you play games like Escape Simulator on your screen, because, you know, I think I'd do a lot better than you in solving some of the easier mysteries, you <laughs> idiot. I mean, I might as well have bought it if you were so insistent on playing it on stream anyway, for crying out loud. But, fine then, go on, play it on your own. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm done with that. Hope you're doing well, boy. <coughs> Excuse me. We can see there that is just a very solid, stable, and successful mission. Next thing I will want to get, though, is I will get Battle Instinct, which will increase all our summon units' attack. The reason why I do that is that we get another one of my favorite units in the game, which is Yuka. How's your night going? It's going pretty well. I will replace my Kagasa with this. And what Yuka's special thing is, is that she will plant sunflowers along the path. Uh, oh, she, uh, she is a gardener, and her role is that she, quite literally, will just garden. Using her abilities, she will just quite literally plant a garden around herself. And the biggest thing about it is that these sunflowers will act as basically kind of like passive damage dealers over time, but will also generate blue points. So she is a living, breathing farm economy for you to use over time. These sunflowers, when, level, when leveling up Yuka, also have the added benefit of, uh, of being able to summon vines and slow down enemy, enemies and such. And fully leveled, she will put a garden in the 12 tiles 
that spawn around her. She only summons two sunflowers at a time per level, but as you level her up, she will be able to summon more and more up until she has a full garden that attacks on her behalf. Note that these sunflowers will wither and die over time, so once they do do their diligent duty, they will summon their blue points and then wither up. So you can reposition her however you like, but the main thing that you want to do is find her a nice, stable square that she can plant her garden in. Now we also get introduced to a new type of spring here, which is this alchemy spring. It is yet another form of economy to where wherever uh, as long as you have a tower standing on it it will constantly generate blue points passively for you so i'm just trying to kind of fire and forget with having that alice right there for now but uh day's been going pretty well Shaito. it's been chilling out spent a lot of time spring cleaning though you can see here the main thing is that those sunflowers while not the most powerful will start attacking enemies in range and the main thing is their strength in numbers. Yuka is by far not the most powerful unit you have on your team, but she will get to generate that economy, which can go a long way towards helping you out, as you can see right there. I'm really getting some blue points from her flowers, and that will be constant throughout the entire mission. Which, of course, is kind of a really good thing. I summon a few centers on the field, but you see here, if we let the Sisu has get to live, they will get to summon some green points for us all on the way. This is a really nice thing, because then that means I have some additional fallback mana. At the same time, I kind of don't want them surviving too far. The Alchemy Spring will also be summoning me a little bit more on the bottom side, as you can see there. So I'll be leveraging that. Now I'll try to get my Nikori as far ahead as possible as I can. Now I think I will go ahead and use my secondary ability to cleave through the Hinas on the way. And I'll just keep working towards getting the Tori to level 5. So level 4, level 5 is when a Notori starts popping off. Because then she can actually start knocking back enemies with her basic attacks. Which is the biggest thing that you need from her. Because her ability to knock back enemies really then starts paying in dividends when you're able to just really start going to town. Now, you can see, I am going to get some Momizis on the way, so I'm going to have to start investing into a Marissa. They do have my Cerno over here, but a Marissa is also uh, a Marissa is going to provide me a little bit more stable damage, just because of just the nature of herself, as the Cerno is definitely much more a support tower, since she is your certified soloer. Plus also, Marissa is a guilty pleasure. If I can just use more Marissa's and just keep doing damage, it's just going to be great. And see, as soon as those sunflowers give us those blue points, they do wither up, so Yuka has to... Uh, so you can't just place her in one spot and then forget about her. She's going... You're going to have to... No, I, I say forget about her, like, ah, just let her do her own thing. No, she's just going... Uh, you're going to have to constantly have her just stay in her one designated spot, which is a slightly annoying thing, but it's a thing you're going to have to deal with with her. Because she's going to be able to hold down her stable garden. But the fact is, is that her garden is still her garden. She has to stay in her one spot to deal uh, to be able to utilize it. <laughs> now then, we get some new enemy types. These silver wolves. These guys are annoying. They are fast. They they and they will get in the way really quickly. I'm going to easily spend some abilities on trying to get rid of them. They are fast units that move fast, and uh, that move fast can easily slip through your defenses super easily, and have a slight magic resist if that wasn't enough of a pain in your sides. Also, I think these Momizis are gonna leak, because I don't think I'm gonna be able to stop them. Also, that wolf might leak too. Yeah, that's two, that's two points of damage, whatever. You have to burn a little bit more though. Here, here. Strategy at least I'm gonna do is level up Alice, that way I can at least stall them a little bit more. Have Natori continue doing her damage. As soon as I get this Marissa to level 5, it'll be a bigger boon, because then I get her global range. 
and I can actually start impacting more than one lane at a time. Because the main thing is I need to hit these momentees with as much damage as I can. Zuka can only do so much on her own. Not bad damage to start. I am almost there to getting my Notori all the way up. Once I do, that's going to be amazing. That extra import of blue points is also going to be really good for that. Who would have known? Now, if I can just use my slash, that'll be great. Don't have to worry about the air units too much. As you can see, these flowers are kind of taking care of them really, really well. So now I can just continue to have Marissa deal damage. Now, that was going all nice and peachy up until we can see the ravens about to start coming in from the other lanes. That is not the best sign, but I can pivot with it. What I can easily do is I can easily start getting the Serena level up and moving her up a little bit more. Because with a level 5 Notori, I can at least start just using her as good leverage in the middle here. And just start knocking them back. In the meantime, even with all these mountain spirits coming along, as long as I just, you know, pop in with Marissa every now and then, make sure I get the straightest line that I can, I shouldn't have to deal with the worst of circumstances, and I should be able to just mope them as fast as possible. Doing pretty good. You just making me a wonderful economy right now. And with that, I'll even move my Notori all the way up to. Heck, I'll move. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm in my Cerno, but I'll move the Notori up. Now, as we go on, the next best thing to do would definitely be get ourselves a race just for general use with her. Just with her wide range. And now, as I get rid of the animal sisters, I'm gonna wanna pay attention to the right lane for whenever it does start perking up. Because there is a new enemy type that we are gonna have to deal with on that side. Until then though, I will have reasons start helping out over here. Don't wanna call the next wave yet, because that new enemy type is going to be a big one that I cannot miss out on yet. Here we go, the Tori Mecha. It is a huge mini boss. <coughs> it does AOE damage with the missiles that it does summon on its side, so any chance of stalling with summons practically goes bye bye. And it can do a wallop. However, even then, it kind of falls real easily to uh, to a Notori itself, as her damage potential is kind of through the roof. In the meantime though, with our Serna, we can deal with the White Wolves a whole lot easier as I don't have to focus in on them completely anymore. Since the Sword Zone and also the Knockback helps to keep them in check. And until then, I'll just have Orisa stay by and just continue to delete these mummies uh, uh, and Momizies. With those guys mostly taken care of. I can go ahead and start to summon the next wave early if I please, which I will do. This fine enemies don't really fear me too- uh, I, I- well, they probably don't fear me, the player, too much, but I really don't fear those fine enemies much at all, myself. So I'll go ahead and burn my abilities and get rid of the Momazis. Get this Cerno to level 5, that way she can support Yuka a little bit more. In the meantime, as we just check in the situation on the sides, you can see, we are handling a pretty stable defense, all heralded by our backbone economy, which I'm very happy with. Now this, I will admit that the one downside I have with this game is that the later missions can easily start to drag, or I just really feel like you're slogging through, and I feel like after like this little mountain art is especially when you start feeling it. But it's, it's by no means a game breaker, it's just that like, for these later missions, I can really feel myself getting just fatigued by just the sheer number of waves and enemies I have to deal with. 
So what I'm thinking is, I'll probably call stream after this after this wave. As you can see here, just even with even with Marissa just existing, I basically don't have to do any work. Oh, I, as as far as like Yomu attacking, Marissa kind of does all the work that's needed for me. I don't have to worry too much otherwise. You can see, even the Notori Mechas stand no chance against our superior strength. So I'll go ahead and call these waves early. Alright, reposition. As you can see, Global Rage Marissa is kind of one of the most crafted things in all of existence in video gaming history. Ish. Can't place her down there though. That's a little bit of a bummer, but that's fine. The next upgrade that I will buy for myself will probably just be honestly another Notori. That way you can lock down the flank. Just that a little bit more. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Two Notori mechas also can look a little frightening, but I'm not too worried considering I'm about to have, well, two Notoris on the side here. That and to deal with the constant influx of Hinas and wolves spawning in, yeah, that, that's gonna make life so much easier for me. see here, those birds definitely can leak out if I'm not most careful, and I did spread my voices out a little bit more, but the fact is, is that with the economy that I'm making right now, I can honestly stay ahead of the curve and deal with them anyway, no matter how far they do get. Now, it technically isn't helping that I am not actively participating on the lanes necessarily, or like having Marissa help out, but... I can just easily just dump that off to the tower responsibility because otherwise you can see we're doing quite well when it comes to, well, managing our towers. I'm making so much money thanks to Yuka and with the stories items from like Notori and such I don't even have to worry about Grayson uh, getting to the point where Grayson has to be used. I mean heck, if this was in the last wave, guess what? I'd just say plant another Yuka and get the economy rolling even more. But unfortunately, the, the way is about to end. Because once I deal with the Notori Mechas, we are quite in business, honestly. We are basically going to be almost done. So you can see right there, another mission done. And that's going to be another favorite character of mine, Anuat. But I will save that for next time, as I've been going for almost two hours. And with flying the sweep and call, I don't want to keep her well, on stream for too long. So, for now, I will call that on my Tohu Tower Defense. We'll go ahead and shift right on over to stream ending, and thank you all for joining me. I'd say hi for fun as well as she is currently sweeping, but wherever you are, wherever you may be, whether you're on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or more, please enjoy yourselves. Have yourselves a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are. Always continue to keep yourselves safe and let us have ourselves a good day overall. We're just gonna chill out, yeah? Have a good night now, everybody.